Good afternoon, Day of Pentecost, Full Gospel Church, and all visitors. We are so grateful once again to be in your presence and in the presence of the Most High God. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you will join us on next Sunday as we celebrate our fourth anniversary and uh, here at the church. And we will also be having as our guest preacher, our Bishop Scotty Jackson, who is the pastor of River of Life Pentecostal Church. Uh, in Colonial Beach, Virginia, and um, he is a dynamic preacher, and not only our bishop, he is a good friend of mine as well. So I hope that you will be here with us, whether it is on Zoom, whether it is in person, or on Facebook Live. Please join in with us. However, if you are here in person, you will be able to be with us for the fellowship meal that is following the worship service. I just happen to know who's fixing the ham. I'm not calling no names. That's all I'm saying. And also, maybe some homemade ice cream. I just happen to know who has the recipe that um, they um, got from their mother when they were seven years old when she bought an ice cream maker. And first grade got to experience it at school this week. That's all I'm saying. But I'm not calling no names. But 125 first graders got to experience it as well. That's my story. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, please come and join us on um, next Sunday. Uh, we're looking forward to a glorious time. Uh, the letters uh, didn't get out as quickly as we had planned, uh, simply because um, the pastor, of course, was in the hospital unexpected. And um, so that kind of threw things off. You know, major train wrecks do happen sometimes, just like airplanes fall, fall out of the air. Well, that's a whole nother ball game. Yeah, but we keep on going. We keep it moving. And I thank God that still in the land of the living, still kicking the devil in his teeth if he, if he has any. So, for our, more, our afternoon scripture, I haven't gotten out of the practice of saying morning scripture. One day we'll get back to the morning scripture again when we are, one day the Lord blesses us with our own building and we have a morning worship service again. Who knows, by that time maybe we'll have two worship services because we will have grown to that place. But someday. Anyway, our afternoon scripture comes from a very familiar passage, Matthew 28, verses 18 and 19 through 20. This is the scripture, the very last scripture in the book of Matthew. And it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things 
whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. And the word amen means so be it. Or it is done. Or in other words, case closed.
you come and go to Canaan land? Won't you come and go to Canaan land? Won't you come and go to Canaan land? I'm on my way, thank God, I'm on my way. I'm on my way to Canaan land.
Now for our Simonic scripture. Coming from Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. Acts chapter 5, verse 12 through 15. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, in so much, or in other words, because, that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that lest the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And my topic for this afternoon, the shadow of your witness. Now, one of the things that um, I thought about this week, I've had a lot going through my mind. Um, end of the year things at school and thinking about how much I'm going to miss the little kids that I've been blessed to work with. Um, also, um, thinking about our anniversary coming up and how the Lord has blessed us to be together, uh, how he brought us together. And so much has gone on uh, over the last couple of weeks and how, um, you know, I had this major train wreck of a surprise illness come on and I said, you know, I didn't know what pneumonia felt like. The only time I had pneumonia, I didn't know about it because I was an infant. My parents told me about it during a 1950 snowstorm in Thanksgiving, the year that I was born, and the Red Cross had to um, get my parents to the train station so that we could come back from Youngstown, Ohio, back to Washington because of such a deep snow. And um, the train was so packed coming from Youngstown that my father stood up most of the way on the train. And my mother was in the ladies' lounge and she had the bassinet sitting on the floor by the heater so that the baby could keep warm, the baby being me. And then I was told that when I got home, I had pneumonia. So, being that I didn't know what pneumonia was supposed to feel like a couple of weeks ago, uh, after service, um, Minister Tammy and my sister were, t were texting, and she and my sister conferred they needed to get me to the hospital. All I know is I was feeling a little wonky, but, you know, being who I am, I got this. No, I didn't have this. And so I've had so much going through my mind thinking about how good God is and how he knows how to intervene in things. And having gone through um, multiple myeloma over the last year and all of that and how 
good God has been and how God is still being good and how I still got this uh, under control, this fight that the Lord is fighting the battle, you know, and I'm the one that's winning the battle that he's fighting. Thus, the song that was in my spirit last weekend, I still hear it in my spirit. He fought the battle and I won. Amen. And then, you know, different things that have happened since then. But I was meditating because wondering, Lord, what do you want me to say this week? What do you want me to say this week? And as I was talking to Bishop Scotty, and he was asking me, what are you going to preach on? I says, well, I'm still at the well trying to see where the Lord is going to take me. He says, brother, if you stay in the well too long, you're going to drown. And I bust out laughing. And as we were praying together, the Lord reminded me of Peter's shadow while we were praying. And the Lord said to me, go there. Go there. And so I was outside yesterday and today in my little four feet by four feet farm garden, I call it, you know, I've taken to farming. <laughs> and the tomato plants that I had started from seeds in an egg carton in my kitchen window that had gotten about that tall, I had 13 plants and I put them out in that little plot this morning. Because yesterday I had turned all of the soil and I had buried leaves down in the bottom so that the earthworms could help them decompose. And then it rained, and I says, oh, that's good. It'll help soak that in. And this morning, I put those 13 seed, those 13 little plants out. And as I was standing there, after the Lord said, talk about Peter and his shadow. And I was standing there thinking, I says, Lord, it's such a pretty morning. And the Lord said, look down at the ground. And I looked down at the ground, and I saw just what I'm seeing now. I saw my shadow. And the Lord said, everywhere you go, there is your shadow. And right at that point, you know, and I, told, I tell folks, the Lord has a sense of humor with me. And sometimes, you know, Every song he brings to me is not deep and spiritual. So he brought this song to me from my childhood, Me and My Shadow. And I started chuckling. And I remember, I can't remember the show, but I remember this, this person tap dancing to that song, Me and My Shadow. And they turned on the spotlight, and he was tap dancing, and the shadow was following his every footprint. And I was so amazed with that as a young child. And then, somehow or another, they had fixed it so that the shadow was tap dancing at a different sink than him. And I said, now how is that possible? And that came to me. And then, of course, at the end, the shadow came back and was synced with him. And I realized later that it was another person who was tap dancing, identical to him and about his same height. And that's how they did that. And so they had done that with cameras and all that kind of stuff they do in Hollywood. But the Lord brought that scripture to my mind and I, then he said to me, 
What if? What if we walk so close to the Lord that the healing that people got, oh, somebody's already picked up where I'm going with this. The healing that people got was not just in the words that come from our mouths. Not just in the touch or the little bit of oil that we put on our fingers and touch on their head. But our very presence in their lives. So much so that even the very shadows that we cast bring an anointing on their lives. I thought about a couple of other scriptures. I thought about the scripture where Jesus was walking in the midst and a blind man, a blind man, did y'all hear me? A blind man heard that Jesus was coming and began to cry out loudly, and people tried to shush him. And the closer Jesus got, the louder he got. Now, it hit me just a few minutes ago. This man was blind. But the anointing on Jesus was so powerful that his presence, even when he got closer, he could feel the presence of the Lord. What if? What if? What if? The, oh, I'm feeling it right now. What if the anointing on you was so powerful that even a blind person could tell if you walked in the room and the power of God was that powerful on you? Now, I, I, I've got an example for you because, you know, um, if one of your senses, one of your five senses is dissipated, the other four get heightened. Now, I had a dog, and actually I had two. Um, lady, the one that had eight puppies born at the top of my steps, when she went blind, within a day, she could find her way around that house. And my sister swore the dog could see again. Because when I took her to my sister's house, within 15 minutes, she could find her way around my sister's house. She got blind because she was diabetic and her sugar took her sight away. She had cataracts and it was too costly to give her cataract surgery that would or would not work. And then the only female in the litter, Queenie, same thing happened to her and I had to give them both insulin shots every day. And Queenie could do the same thing. And even on the step, she'd get to the edge of the step and she could know where that was and she'd put her paw out. Both of them would do that same thing. Get to the edge of the steps and put her paw out and know where the edge of the steps was and go down those steps just like they had sight. And Queenie had gotten to the place in the backyard, she could walk around the backyard and I could say, no, Queenie, or stop. And she would know to stop and put her foot out to see that it was a 
a high drop in the backyard and she turn around and go another way. Because her other senses were heightened. And in my second book that hopefully will be out before the next millennium, that's a whole other story. I tell a story about Queenie walking out the yard and then following my voice when she got lost behind the house near the quarry. And all she did was follow my voice. And the closer she got, she would turn her head and look. What if the anointing were on us so strong that our voices, our shadow, our presence, even when folks couldn't see us, would cause them to know that we're there. Now, I, I have a couple of colognes that go well with my body chemistry. Bijon, kind of expensive. It's a French men's cologne. And Lagerfeld, those are the only two that I seem to like that go well with my body chemistry. And I had a blind person say one time uh, when I was visiting a friend, Walter's either been here or he's here. And I bust out laughing. And he says, I knew he was here because I could smell him. And it had been hours and I'd only put a little bit on. But he had gotten used to my scent. And I think I told the story about when my mother passed away I became very sensitive that every one of us has a scent. And then I found out that dogs can sense things. They can sense if a person is good or bad, or if they're close to you, they can sense if you're happy, sad, depressed, or sick. Honey Bun, the one that we rescued from the Prince George's County shelter from my dad after Coco, one of the dogs that was born in the house, passed away. We got Honey Bun, and she was like this with my dad. And when my dad passed away, she came to stay with me. Now, she had separation anxiety from when my dad passed away. And when I was in Charlottesville for those several months, she had separation anxiety again. But prior to going there, she sensed that something was wrong and she was up under me and still is everywhere I go. She lays right by me. My other one, Duke, he's got food aggression that he's finally getting over it somewhat because he realized that he's not going to be starved anymore, not living with me. But I still can't trust him because anytime he goes around food, he wants to get a little aggressive so I have to separate him from honey bun when it's time to eat because I don't want anything to happen to honey bun because that was daddy's dog and I'd be horrified if anything happened but they could sense that something was wrong in my body and they are very clingy what if the anointing was so strong on us that whenever we walked into a room, people could feel that anointing. And it sometimes happens. What if, before we uttered a word, people started getting victory? People started getting healing? People started getting free in the spirit? People started sensing 
their blessing in their hand. Those things happen. I done left my notes all the way because the Lord's beginning to speak to me. Because you see, that's what happened. Because there was another song, a worldly song that came to me that I used to hear. I think it was kind of a jazz song called The Shadow of Your Smile. And then the Lord brought a spiritual song to me. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And sometimes people can see the joy of the Lord in you. When you walk into a room, they can sense it in your presence. I think about a time I was just sitting, waiting in the doctor's office, and this lady came up to me and she said, you just look so full of joy. And I just smiled and I said, I really am. She says, it shows. And I don't know what I was doing anything different than I normally do. And she just said, it just made my day. Now, I don't know whether she was having a bad day or not, but I know whatever it was, I just started thanking God because here I was making a witness without even saying, today I'm going out and I am going to witness to somebody in the name of the Lord. I was just sitting there minding my own business, just being me. But I told you all, every time I go to the doctor's office, the Lord always gives me a divine appointment. In the hospital, God gave me a divine appointment. What if the shadow that you cast when you went by blessed somebody like Peter's did on those people that his shadow cast on? Oh, to have that kind of anointing that was so powerful that when your shadow fell, people got victory. Chains got broken. Deliverance came. And you know, my scripture tells me that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I'm not one of those people that believe that whatever went on in the scripture is done and it's not for today. No. That's called secessionism. Everything that God did back then, he's still doing today. Amen. The reason it doesn't happen is because of people's non-belief. God still heals. God still delivers. God still gives victory. God still can raise people up and it still happens. The only reason it doesn't is because of the opposite of faith. It's a word called doubt. And I made a vow to the Lord when he woke me up on that early morning in January after the doctor said, multiple myeloma and he woke me up and said you shall live and not die I have work for you to do I have plans for you and then he reiterated the words my mother used to say to me and my sister when we got our faces twisted up and got our attitudes wrong he says now fix your face and since that time, I've been on a mission to help everybody else get their faces fixed. Because I want to make sure mine doesn't get unfixed ever again. 
So wherever I go, I want my shadow to be right too. Just like the scripture told the, told the prophet, wherever your feet trod, I give you the land. Wherever my shadow falls, I want somebody to be blessed. Wherever I go, wherever my footprints go, I want somebody, if they cross those footprints, know that they have walked in the shadow of an anointing. The word tells us, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow, in the shadow of the Almighty. So there's power in the shadow of the Lord. And if there's power in the shadow of the Lord and I'm in him, then there's power in the shadow that I cast because I'm in the Lord. That's the way I rationalize because that's the way God gave it to me. And in order for there to be a shadow, there's got to be light. And the light has to come from the sun, S-O-N, sun. So I continue to walk in the light of Jesus because I want my shadow to cast a mini anointing on somebody who's hurting. And you know, the closer you are to the light, have you ever noticed the longer your shadow is? It gets elongated. And the closer you are to the light, the warmer you are. Because light gives warmth. Light gives warmth. And your shadow can bring healing because the light that's on you is causing the shadow to fall. So why don't you decide if you're not doing it, you want to walk in the light. There's a song. There's always a song. We walk in the light. Beauty. today hear this message and walk in your light and cast the shadow of your glorious healing on the lives of someone else Lord if they don't know you in the parting of sin Father 
bring salvation unto them. Let them come to you and say, Lord, I am a sinner and in need of salvation. Let them fall under the shadow of the cross. Let them experience the love of Jesus in such a powerful way that they'll never, ever want to turn back. And then, Father, take them on the next step of that journey. For your word says, and ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Let them experience that heavy Holy Ghost anointing in a powerful way. In Jesus' name I pray. That is my story. Oh, yes, it's my story. And Lord, I'm going to stick to it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And once more for the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.